Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Oh, we've got a fun one for you today. We've got an icon list here and as you can see, our little icons are animated. Nice little eye-catching feature to have on your site. Got to do a little bit of coding for this today, but as usual, any code I write, I'll put down below the video. You're welcome to copy it, paste it, use it as you wish. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, let's go down, we'll start a new section, a little blue button there for a new section. I'm going to make it a regular section. Inside, I'm going to put a row perhaps with two columns, but one slightly bigger than one on the left there, something like this. And I'm going to pop a blurb module in there. And before I do anything else, let's just delete our little section that we've got going on the top here. Okay. Well, we've got our little blurb module there. I want to have an icon to the left of my writing here. So let's go in there and do that. I'm going to go into the blurb module, the dark tab there. I don't want anything in the content. I've got a little list. Let's go grab something quickly. And for the title is where I'm going to put my little first little icon list item there down below in the image and icon. I want to use an icon. I'm going to use a check mark for mine. Obviously you use what works for you. And I think I'll use that same one as I used before. If you wanted to link your items you could do so down here. Just pop your link in there for the title if that's what you want to link or the whole module if you want them to click anywhere on it. Always best practice if you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off site, open it in a new tab. That way your site's going to stay open. Great. Well, let's move on to our design now. For the image and icon, let's make it green for a positive check mark. And I actually want to put it on the left. So placement down here. Just pop it on the left. Fantastic. Well, that's pretty much got it how I want it. I want to align my title so it's more central to my little check mark there. To do that, I'm going to use line height. If you just roll over the title there, you'll see the little paintbrush icon. Just click on it. It'll take you straight to it. In a while, I'm going to turn it white when we put our image behind, but I'll leave it as it is at the moment because so you can see it better. I'm going to use line height for this today. I'm going to drag my line height up. As I'm dragging it up, you can see that coming down a little bit. I want it fairly central, something like that. Fantastic. Well, there's our first one. I want to duplicate it now with my other little bullet points that I've got. But it's probably going to be taking up too much real estate. Let's just duplicate it with the little squares and see where the next one is. It's a little too far away. So we'll delete that one. We'll go into our original one. Over to design and spacing. And let's take a bit of the margin off the bottom. Let's perhaps give it 10 pixels. Now if we try duplicating it, we'll see how far below it is. Two little squares again. Yeah, I think that's going to work for me. Great. Now we've got that, we can just go in there. Change out our little text heading. And I'm going to rinse and repeat. I'm just going to keep doing that until I've got the number I want with the duplicate. I'll pause the video until I've got about eight or so. Okay, well, I've got eight little points there. That's great. Now we want to animate our little icons here just to make it stand out a little bit more. To do that, we're going to write some CSS. And I have to give this each of these a class so we can target it with the CSS. So let's go into one of our little bullet points here. I'm going to go over to advanced CSS IDs and classes and we can make up a class name for it. I'm going to call mine icon and for animation. I'm going to call it two because I already created one for the demonstration. Great. Once we've got that class, let's copy that class, control C. And we want all of these modules to have that same class. So what I'm going to do, right click, I'm going to say extend blurb styles and everything in this column 
and we'll go ahead and say extend. Now if we go into this bottom one it should have the same class name. There we go, fantastic. Great, now we've got that we can target it with some code. Now I'm going to use a code module for this today, I can't put the style tags down below. You can use a code module if you're just using it on this page or you can put it in your additional CSS panel if you want to use it across your site. To get to the additional CSS panel we can go to dashboard down to appearance and customize. That's going to take us to this page here. Right at the bottom you've got your additional CSS panel where you can write your code if you want to. Like I say I'm going to use a code module for mine today so we can see what's going on with the actual page. So I'm going to add a new module just underneath our last bullet point there. I'm going to use a code module. Like I say all this code will be down below bar the style tags because of the pointy brackets I can't paste that down below and if you're using a code module you need to put style tags in there which is left pointy bracket the word style and right pointy bracket simple as that. Once you've done that it'll add the closing one which is the same with a forward slash in front of the styles there. In between we can write our code. Okay so we had that class name we copied. All class names have to have a dot or a period when you're writing in the additional CSS panel or code module. So it's a dot then the class name. But I actually want to target. I don't want to target the whole module here. I just want to target the little icon there. So I can either save my changes and exit the Visual Builder to inspect or I've got this same page up on the customizer. It's not the right thing because we've deleted this but it should tell me what that class name is for this icon. So if I right click and inspect we've got it here. And there's the class name I want ETPB icon. All these are class names and every time there's a gap that's a new class name that comes after it gap new class name. What I want is ETPB icon. So I'm going to select that and copy it, control C. We go back now. I can target only icon to icons by putting it in there. So it's a class name again. We need another dot, then the class name itself. Now we can open some curly brackets. Inside we can tell it what we want. Well, I want it to animate, so I'm going to say animation. And the name of the animation, so I'll put colon and what name we want to give it. I'm going to call mine list spin. Call yours what you want. It wants to be unique though, means something to you. I want it to run for 10 seconds. And I want it to keep going. So I'm going to say infinite. Now, unlike a lot of other animations we've done, we have to use the important on this because those icons have actually got an animation applied to them when they load. So to overwrite that and make it work with ours, I'm just going to put important there. Exclamation important. That's great. Now we have to create this animation. We're going to be using keyframes for this today. So I'm going to say at keyframes. Then the name of the animation, which is a list spin. Now we can open some more curly brackets and tell it how we want to animate it. So I'm going to put in 0% when the page loads basically second one of our 10 seconds we'll open some more curly brackets there I'm going to use some transform rotate for mine today so I'm going to say transform colon rotate right at the end of rotate we want some round brackets with no gap and we can tell it by how much we want it to rotate well when the page loads at 0% or second one of our 10 seconds just want it to be right way around so we're not going to rotate it at all now I'm going to copy this four times. Control C, I'm going to drop down, paste, three, and one more. And I'm going to make this one 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. And we'll just tidy those up just a little bit. Okay, so at zero, I'm not going to have it do anything. 
I think up until 50% I'll just have it doing nothing that way it'll spin then it'll stop then it'll spin again so about 50% I'm going to put 360 degrees DEG for degrees then I'm going to keep that on 75% and then when it goes back to 100% it can stay on zero so I'm just going to put that one in there and you may have noticed our icons have already started spinning up there and you don't have to do a rotate you can do a bounce you can do whatever you want I'm just doing that today because I quite like it so we should be pretty good to go let's just make our section a little more interesting by putting an image behind there and don't forget all this code will be down below without the style tags so don't forget if you're using a code module you have to write those in if you're using your additional CSS panel you don't need them at all great well let's save that I'm going to go into my section now I'm going to go down to background I'm going to pop an image in there we've got color gradient image background video pattern or mask I'm just simply going to pop an image in there I'm going to add a little gradient to make our text stand out a little bit better I'm going to make it white also in a minute as it's a busy picture so I'm going to add a gradient that one I'm going to make black and the one on the right I'm going to make transparent I'm going to roll down a little bit place gradient above as you can see that's pop that on top but I want it going from right to left so let's roll up a bit we're doing linear right here I'm going to say 90 degrees and that way the dark starting from the left moving to the right and you can pull this stop up a bit if it's going too far for you will lighten it up to about there or something like that but again that's entirely up to you design wise I want to give it a bit more spacing so I'm going to give it 150 pixels padding top and bottom just put in the number hit the little chain it'll do the opposite side for you there we go great I'm happy with that for our section but of course we can't read our writing so again I'm going to go into my top module I'm going to click on the little paintbrush icon I'm going to make that white I think I might make it semi bold sticks out even a little bit better like that and I'm going to do the same as we did before I'm going to right click on the dark module I'm going to say extend blurb styles and again I want to do everything in the column and there we have it I could darken that down slightly a little bit more that top writing is getting a little bit lost in there so our section background the gradient just need to pull that stop over to the right a little bit and you can see it darkening down on the left hand side there great well that's going to work for me we'll save our changes exit the visual builder and there we have it we've got our little animated icon list and that's a great little eye-catching feature to have on your site I'd probably integrate it perhaps a good example would be to have it on a contact section with a little contact form on the right hand side your hours and your address and stuff like that but for any sort of list that's kind of a nice little eye-catching option so I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to our YouTube channel don't forget if you have any questions pop them below the video I'll do my best to answer them or make a demo video for you once again this has been Jamie with system 22 and webdesignertechtips.com thanks for watching have a great day